We'll put it on YouTube. You guys could see it. We'll definitely edit this start. But you guys could see and get all the information from Lauren, from Coach Corey, from Coach Daniel. Um, and as we're going to start, we're starting right now. Um, we have a few players in here. And Lauren, I just want you to just give us like a brief introduction. Um, just tell us about your playing career. Yeah. And your time playing from Canada, America. Tell us, tell us everything. Yeah. Okay. So hi, everybody. So nice to meet you. I wish you could see your faces, but I know people are shy. It's okay. You'll learn that I'm not shy at all. So you guys can seriously ask me anything. I'm an open book. Um, so my name is Lauren Susselman. I am actually from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and um, I went to Purdue University. And then I played pro the last 12 years. I got drafted out of college to Chicago and then ended up with uh, Jersey where we won the first WPS championship. So if you guys don't know how it was, it was like when Mia Hamm was around, it was called WUSA. Then it was called WPS and now it's called the NWSL. Um, so that's been going really well. As you can see, if you guys have been following along the tournament that they're having right now. Um, so I played there in Atlanta and then I joined the national team, the Canadian national team um, in 2011. And you're probably wondering how I played for Canada since I'm American. Um, my father is um, Canadian and grew up in Canada. And if a, if a parent or a grandparent is from another country, you can play for another country. And so, um, yeah, I joined the national team then. And that's when my career kind of just took off. And then, you know, I played in Kansas City. Um, I played in uh, Houston Dash for four years. And then I also played in the Pan American Games where I have a gold medal. I have um, a bronze medal in the London Olympics and I played in the 2015 World Cup. Um, so yeah, I gotta do it all. So it's been quite an awesome career and it was been super fun. And um, I just retired. I'm still playing semi-pro for fun, but now that LA is getting a team, maybe I'll come out of retirement. <laughs> Yay. Yay. How do you feel about LA having a team uh, and it's predominantly owned by women. How do you feel like about that? Honestly, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, to see the powerhouses that are, of the names that are attached to it. Um, you know, I played in the, in the WPS when they had the soul um, and the amount of fan base that they had out in LA has been incredible. And now that with the addition of LAFC out here, the soccer fan base is even bigger. And, you know, everyone's always asking, when is LA going to get a team? When is LA going to get a team? And the semi-pro team that I'm on right now, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff to try to bring soccer to LA. And now that it's happening, it's, it's pretty cool. You have Serena and Natalie Portman, like everyone's involved and you're getting a lot of like even male like they're really, the men are really into it too. Um, you're getting a lot of support from a lot of other sports figures, LeBron, et cetera. So it's pretty amazing to see um, how much this game has grown. And, you know, that's a huge testament to obviously the NWSL, what they've done with this league, all the leagues around the world, but also the national team and how much um, they've really done for our country. Nice. Um, I mean, I feel I have like so much questions, but um, definitely your time playing, what was, what was the most memorable, um, experience you had? I, I guess if I had to guess was going to the Olympics, but yeah. what was your best and most memorable experience that you had? I think there was kind of just like different milestones throughout my career. Um, I would say first and foremost, getting drafted. That was a dream come true ever since I was, was young. That was, you know, my goal. What age my did you get drafted at? Yeah. And then obviously making the national team, like going in there, really an unknown name and just, you know, giving it my all in training and then becoming a starter right away. And I should say, I actually was a forward to all the little ones um, watching. I was a forward my whole career. And then when I joined the national team in 2011, I became a left back center back. Um, so that was a crazy transition. So, and that's when I was like 26 years old. So it's crazy to be that position for so long and then switch um but yeah i forgot my train of thought there sorry <laughs> but most horrible was it yeah it was the olympics obviously um seeing the flag rise my family was there and anybody that watched that game 
um, would know that we should have been in the, the gold medal match, but you know what? It's fine. We still came in and we, and we won a bronze. And I think that was like, seriously, it took Canada to a whole nother level. And, um, I think that we really were put on the map for, as a soccer powerhouse. So I think that was definitely it. And then coming back from an ACL injury to play in the world cup was, I mean, that's everyone's dream to play in a world cup. So yeah, and in Canada, so it was pretty special. Nice. Well, I, I guess um, I would That's jump into questions question. earlier. Like, yeah, like Ashley asked, you know, how much did you train on your own outside of team practices? Um, yeah. And I, I would put it to this question with, because people on this chat are probably 12 to 18, 19 years old. At that age, how much did you train outside of high school, school? Um, did you knock it against a wall? What, what was oh, Lauren yeah. doing at like I think years old? Wherever I was, I had the ball at my feet. Like I was also actually also a huge basketball player. I think basketball has turned me into the soccer player that I was. If you ever watch how I play defense, etc., I learned a lot from basketball. So I'm a huge advocate of playing multiple sports and not getting burnt out on one sport. Yes, Coach Corey is into that. Yes, I'm. And any other athlete will tell you the same thing. I know a lot of parents are like, you have to choose one, but I no other athlete will tell you that that's a good idea. And so. Um, I was always out playing with my brothers. My brothers, fortunately, were goalkeepers. So it was perfect for me to get out there and train. And my dad was, was my coach ever since I was little with basketball. And so he was training me. And um, yeah, so I was always out there. But, you know, obviously, when you're playing for club in high school, like high school, you were training pretty much every day. Um, and, and the days I had, I always make sure I took my rest. I think it's really important because you're training so much to not get burnt out, to take your rest. Um, I can't stress that enough. Take your rest days. Don't overdo it. I see some kids are just overdoing it too much. And then there's so many injuries. So, uh, and that's actually how I got injured. We were doing way too much training and then we cut it back and it was the perfect amount. Um, what, do yeah, oh, way too much training? what? What do you think is way too much training? Like, I mean, you have people that are like training like two to three times a day and then they're not taking a day off. So, I mean, for me, like I do, if you do one hardcore practice, one and a half hours, you're, you're, you're good. You can go out and play and dink around with the ball. That's fine. Or if you do the weightlifting and stuff like that, especially you guys are at the vital age of lifting weights, especially if you want to play in college and doing that kind of training, not just the soccer training, because doing the off field stuff is just as important as what you're doing on the field as well. So I can't stress that enough to really get into that, especially if you want to play in college, but it's also going to make you stronger. I mean, girls are more susceptible to injuries. We all know that with our hormones. Um, and you'll see that a lot of girls, unfortunately get injured a lot more. So I think it's important just learning those kind of things outside of the sport of what's on, uh, on the field as well. Um, but yeah, like I train probably, I train five to six days a week and the sixth and seventh day I take a rest and I'll do maybe like a, a good stretching mobility session. Um, sometimes I take two days off. It depends how hard we train because when we were playing in the pros, sometimes we we're training two a days and it just takes a lot out of you. So, you, so uh, in addition to that, it's really important to do the nutrition part, the hydration part all those kinds of things, because you're burning so many calories. I don't think, especially girls, we'd be like, we can't eat, we can't eat, you know, but you're burning, you have to realize how many calories you're burning throughout the day. So it's kind of just making sure you guys are on top of everything as a whole, as a player. Nice. Um, Coach Corey, do you want to shoot us a question? You're, you're free to chat, or if it's too loud, I'll, I'll answer your question in here. Yeah, I would love to, um, thank you so much. Um, I would love to, um, know your approach to the the mental approach to the game obviously you have you know you have the 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 physical side of the sport mm -hmm. what was what's your guidance on the mental approach to the game or what did you how did you choose to train your brain that's a great question and in all honesty mentality is number one because if you don't have it up here you're not going to have it down there and the rest of you know just as a whole you're not going to be the complete player like it once this goes you're going to be not there and non-existent on the field. So I think, um, first of all, surrounding yourself with, with good coaches and good players that are constantly lifting you up and telling you, um, 
what you're good at and what you're strong at and how we, you know, we can work on our weaknesses in a positive way. Um, I really think the coaches, it starts with that. And then also the players working with other players that are going to bring them up. Hey, like I, you know, like maybe I'm better than this at you and I can show you how to do this and you can show me how to do that. Um, for the mental, you have to do a lot on your own as well. And I think it's just also instilling that belief in yourself that yes, like, you have to be confident. If you're gonna go and you wanna go play in the pros, you have to have that confidence and that mental toughness. So a lot of times what I do before I go into a game, and we had a sports psychologist that worked with us a lot, so we were very blessed in that way. But um, if, if you guys are young right now, but I also, so I think it's just like surrounding yourself with the positivity is, is number one, especially you're impressionable at that age. Um, and just telling yourself, I got this, you know, be confident going out there and like, Hey, if I mess up, it's okay. You lose it. You win it right back. I mean, if you watch all the greats, we all mess up, you know, Messi messes up. Carly Lloyd messes up. Alex Morgan. I messed up at the world cup. Things happen, you know, no one's invincible. So what you do, it's how you react to that. So you mess up, you get right back up, you win it and you do something good. Um, so I think it's just, it's just training your brain to constantly be like that when you're in practice, um, practice is the time to mess up, you know, and then in a game, you, you lose the ball, you win it right back. Um, I do a lot of, um, mental training before I step out onto the field, like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. This, this is my goals for this practice, or this is my goals for this game, or I'm guarding Alex Morgan. She's not going to get past me. I've studied how she's, she plays and I can do this. And then when I get on the field, I'm like, I'm not scared. So I think it's just having that, that mentality. Do you have? Oh, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Muted. Do you have an alter ego like Kobe Bryant had the Mamba? Do you have an alter ego that? Yeah, like, I think we all transform into this other person when we step onto the field. Everyone's like, you're so sweet, Lauren. And then, but when you step on the field, like, not so nice. Like, I will tackle you. I'm not scared. And I think in, I think in order to be, at that opt optimal level and to be the best that you can be and the best that you want to be at that sport. And if you want to go on to play, I'm telling you, when you get to the pros, no one's going to care who you are. They will go in and they will tackle you, tackle you. So you need to have that alter ego. When you step onto the, to the field, you're like, Oh yeah, I'm bad. I got this. So I think that's, you do have to have that. And then off the field, you're like, high five, high five, high five. You guys were amazing. You leave everything on the field. And that's how I always feel. Coach, Coach Daniel, um, do you want to take over and just ask a question based off of what you have? You are muted as well, sir. Yes, definitely. I appreciate that. Um, enjoying your story so far. Great question, Coach Corey. Um, okay, so as a coach from the, crew, the coach's side of things, and I try to always evolve, especially with the type of players we have. I grew up old school. We had one or two balls at practice yeah. and it was a Mikasa hard hard ball and we did the same thing over and over we had like two cones versus now we have all these equipment all these poles and hurdles and fancy stuff um when I speak to high level players like I, I speak to I coach with a girl called Jill right now she's at U of A and she's a super dominant and she says she loves the basics and there's players like that who enjoy basics or who enjoy running or enjoy process for you what is big for you to be that elite player is it a lot of reps it, or is it like a lot of training where there's a lot of stimulus a lot of different things or coach has like well x equals b equals z equals i or do you like the basics and have like a thousand passes <laughs> a thousand touches um, a thousand shots per practice What's your thoughts? That's, that's a great question. And um, as a player, you just talked about the basics. The basics are huge. I know like as we go up, we're like, oh, I'm over the basics. It's like so monotonous. It's like over and over and over. But the repetition, repetition, repetition of those basics, you're just going to keep getting better and better and better. In, in the pros, we still do the basics. We still are doing those, those passing drills, one, two, touch, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, cause it's all about that repetition and we do do a lot of like the stimulus stuff too, but the basics is where it's at. And that's what we learn. If you throw too much at people, it's just why it's just, you know, soccer is a basic game. You know, there's not just like, there's not too much overthinking to it. It's like you have the plan and you execute the plan. You have, um, 
what you're going to play and you execute that. You have your style, you have what players you're going to be playing against, et cetera, et cetera, and you execute that. So it's executing all those things, even if it's basic well, because there's a lot of things where I've been coaching kids at, you know, at different levels and they can't do the basics. Mm -hmm. like, yep. Why are you, why can't you do this at this level? You know, they weren't taught it the right way or they still just don't understand it. So I think it's really important to do the basics and then you can add little things each practice, add something different. Um, I have a lot of reaction. We do a lot of reactionary stuff because especially as you keep going, soccer is very reactionary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I lose the ball. Okay. I'll, especially if you're a defender, you lose the ball. Okay. All the way we're backtracking. We're going, we're getting a body position. I like to work too on the physical aspect of it too, because the game has evolved so much that if you watch women versus men, the women are way more physical than the men, you know? So I think that's very important to stress with, with the, with females, especially is don't be afraid to get in there, use your arms, use your elbows, be strong. And I think putting emphasis on that is going to be huge in these players. If you're all the players that are listening, being that strong powerhouse, I'm telling you, coaches want that more than anything, that aggressive nature. If you are aggressive and you're not the most technical player, the coaches will, will swipe you up. They will love you. For me, my style of play was always, I was very good at reading players. So that's what I knew I was good at. I was strong and good in the air. Not necessarily the most technical player, but I didn't have to be. If you're smart on the ball, you know the basics, you know where the ball needs to go. You can read where your players are around you. You guys all work together as a system. You're going to be successful. Nice. Um, Appreciate that. I, yeah. I want to – oh, so a question coming in from Coach Corey. As a female yeah, athlete, when do you learn to stab in your power and confidence? Was, was there a moment? What did you just say? I'm sorry. Coach Corey, you, want, you could jump on and uh, – I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, so Warren, as a female athlete and an athlete in, you know, in general – like, when did you, was there a moment or a specific, like, moment of impact when you're like, yes, I'm not, I'm standing in my power and I have that confidence? Yeah, I think I've had many moments of that, you know, even at a young age, you know, you just, I think you go through and you have just different moments and different times where you're like, oh, wow, I did awesome there. You know, I think, you know, in college, I had a lot of those moments where, you know, you know, leading scorer did, did these things, did that. And you're just like, wow, I feel like I'm evolving every day as a player and helping the other players around me evolve. Um, that's a hard question to answer because I feel like you should be having those moments every time you step onto the field, you know, and taking away from each practice, something that you were like, wow, I did a great job at that, you know? So every, I always have goals and set goals for like a practice and be like, okay, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get scored on more than twice. I'm going to make sure my, my defense is really tight and work on that. So it's just small goals like that. And when I feel like, yeah, we did it and we nailed it. I'm like, wow, that's powerful. We're going to do that and mimic that in the game. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't really know how to answer that question. That's a good question, I guess, too. Just, I think every time I step onto the field, I try to be that way. Cause I feel like if you don't have that mentality, like you're not going to perform the way you want to perform. So yeah, I guess maybe, say. No, that's, that's, that's great. Maybe it's more of um, answering for these young athletes how important self-reflection is. Oh, I mean, that's very important because you can't just step off the field and be like, I didn't make any mistakes. You can't be that player. And I've been surrounded by players that are like that. And I'm like, no, you didn't do that. You didn't do that. But you need to start doing that so we can come together and we can be better players. And I think it's holding – not only yourself accountable, but the other players around you. And that's why communication is so huge when you're playing, especially for soccer players, communication, communication is, is, is huge. Um, so I think like the self-reflection is a huge thing after I'll assess every training session and be like, I didn't do that. Well, and this, um, you know, I didn't do well that like for me, um, we did a lot going into the Olympics and we lost to the U S in that semifinal game and we were just gutted. And it was like, well, what did we do wrong? What was our self-reflection on that game? Because we need to turn it around and we need to fix it ASAP and we need to go out and we need to play France and we need to win a medal. And that's exactly what we did. 
you know, I mean, there was that time to be like, woe is me. I'm done with that mentality, negativity gone. Step out. It's a new day. It's a new time. And it's ready to come back and, and crush it. So I think it's like, you can't go back in the past. You can only go forward. So you just got to get rid of everything you mess up on. I mean, I slipped in the world cup, had a horrible moment in the world cup, but then we just kept going. So, you know, you break out of that and then you keep going. So that's always my, what I tell my kids. Hey, Lauren, a common question. Um, I played defense in college and then after college, I was a striker. You played striker before and then you played defense. Mm -hmm. What was that switch for you like? And did you like playing defense? And then two, how did playing as a striker help you as a defender? So at first I was a little like, what, you want to play defense? Because like defense, everyone's like defense is easy. It's actually very scary. I'm not going to lie because you are the backbone of everything and you are the captains on the field because you see everything. So me as I always had to be a leader on the field and I'd be like, cause I could see everything and you have to make sure you're tucking in, you're talking because one mess up in the back could just mess up everything. So that was one thing I wasn't ready for, especially since my first game, two days after I learned how to play the position, I had to play against Abby Wambach and I had to mark her. I was so scared and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it was just, it's so funny. But I think as a forward, when I first moved back, I was a outside back. So I was always running up and down. So at least I got to get into the attack. And I think it was just like learning how to stick with my back line and not get too slap happy to move forward. I think that was like the biggest thing. But when I got back into that position as an outside back center back, I felt like that was my place, especially in the pros, because I think in college, I was, I was a great forward and it worked when I was in college. I went big 10, it was physical force, you know, amazing. When you get to the pros, everyone is so much faster and stronger than you. I wasn't always a fast player. I was a quick player, so I could react quickly and I could read players well. So if you're not a fast player, seriously, do not like, it's fine. Just learn something else that you're good at. So I was good at using my body. So I had to go up against Heather O'Reilly. If you guys know who Heather O'Reilly is, um, she's very, and Megan Rapino. they're very, and Tobin Heath, they're very, very fast players and they're very smart players, but they don't like physical. So when a fast player that you're playing against like that, it's all about using your body and stepping in front of them because Heather O'Reilly, her thing was she likes to push the ball forward and run. And most of the forwards like to do that because they're fast. So it's all about learning how to use your body as a defender and stepping in front of them to slow them down and you get to the ball first. So it's things like that I had to learn. But I think basketball, as I said, really helped me because I was always very defensive minded during basketball, but also as a forward, whenever I lost the ball, I would win it right back and I would slide tackle the the defenders all the time. So I think I was always meant to be a defender. <laughs> but I think as you're, if you're a forward, make sure you're playing defense. My biggest pet peeve is when people are not playing defense. Just because you're an offensive player does not mean you don't help. It's a collective team effort. So if you guys are listening, make sure you lose the ball, you win it back. Hey, Ashley has a question. Ashley, you can turn your video on and you can ask a question. There's lots of good questions here. I can answer. Come on, Ashley. Don't be shy. Um, were there any major challenges you went through, like, in your career, like, high school through professional, and, like, how did you overcome them? Yeah. Um, so I faced a quite a bit of different ones. So I came out of college. I had a great college career. And then you get to the pros, and it's, like, a whole nother world. And it's, it's very scary. And I didn't do the best in my first year – um, first couple of years of the pros, I played one minute. So I went from playing a lot in college to playing one minute my first year um, in the pros. And then I gained a little bit more playing time throughout the years because I was always working so hard. I was always a player that was maybe not the best player in the field, but I was always working so hard. And that's when the coaches saw it and gave me, gave me a chance. Um, so I think there was the one time right before I joined the national team where I almost quit. I was like, I called my dad. My dad's like one of my best friends. And I'm just like, look, I just don't think, I mean, I, this is my third year. I'm not really playing. Like, do I quit? I think like my dream is over and it was rough for me. It was hard. I was like, my mentality was way down. We talked about mentality and I was not in a good headspace at that point. And so I almost quit. And the next day, my dad's like, just stick it out. 
the next day I got the call from the national team and they were like, you're coming into camp. And I was like, wait, what, you know? So I think like, no matter when you think like your time is up, like keep going. Cause I always tell the, the players that your time is going to come. And I've seen a lot of players that I coach and I mentor and I'm like, just stick it out one more year. And then they get that, they get that contract or and I help them along the way. So I think it's just, and then also with my injury, my injury was a very hard one. And I know as females, we talk about injuries a lot. Um, you know, we were, this was a year before the world cup world cup was the only thing I really wanted to really be part of. I tore my ACL and it was really hard mentally. You're on your own a lot. You really have to pull yourself out of that and find a way to, to get back into it and to really like your mental game is very, very, got to be very strong during that time. So um, I think those were probably the two challenging moments in my career where, and then also falling at the World Cup was, was very hard for me. Um, I don't know if you guys watched the game, but I slipped and I fell because they watered the turf, which we should not be playing on turf. Women should not be playing on turf and they watered it and I slipped. And we lost that game in the quarters to England. And I was blamed for pretty much everything because that's what happens when you're a defender. And so I think that was one of the biggest moments in my career where, you know, I still struggle with that today. It was like, oh, was that the end for me? Because I ended on that note. And I think it's just like being like, no, no, you had such an incredible career, you know? So there's a lot of things that you, that you, that happened to you throughout this career. It's not an easy journey, but I can tell you it's worth it. And you have to have good teammates around you helping you push you through. So good support system, but yeah, probably a lot of things that you guys have gone through as well. I've gone through. So it's, it's probably nice to hear that, that we're very relatable in that way. Hey, Ella has a question, Lauren, for you. Ella, do you want to turn your video on and ask a question? Hi, um, was it hard balancing school and soccer for you? Was it hard balancing? You know, I think it's all about choices. For me, I knew that I wanted to get a scholarship um, to play in college. College soccer was the coolest experience ever. And I think you just have to make choices. Maybe I didn't get to hang out with my friends as much as possible, but what you learn along the way is, is time and balance and uh, you know, sectioning out your schedule so that you can pretty much do it all. So you can have time with your friends because it's very important to have time with your friends. Okay. You don't want to, so make sure you get your training in and then you have, let's say two hours after school where, you know, you're doing your training. Then you have your two hours where you're doing your homework and then you leave that for the weekend, you can go play or, um, stuff like that. I think it's very important to have fun and not focus too much, but also making sure that you are getting what you need to done, get done for school, because school is very important, especially as a female. Um, our journeys are a lot different than, than men. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the leagues, you know, money, et cetera, et cetera. So school is very important. So put a lot of emphasis on that. But even in school and college, which I love that they do is we have study tables that you have to get accomplished every week. So they're very good about time and balancing everything. Um, I hope that answered your question, but I think it's just like kind of setting a schedule for yourself and being like, okay, this time I'm going to go train this time. I'm going to spend with my friends and just enjoying life. You know, you guys are young, have fun. Thank you. But stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> All right, so um, Ty has a question that Ty wanted me to ask on, okay. on camera. Uh, what things does Lauren wish she should have worked on more as a young player that would have prepared her later in her career? That is a really great good, question. Really great question. So, that's great. So I come from a, a small city, Green Bay. We, we're a little bit behind in the soccer game. And I think that I wish I would have, as I stressed before, the basics. Wish I would have did a little bit more of the basics when I was training because I was never really taught th things growing up. Um, you guys have great training out here. Like California is one of the, the hot spots for soccer. You guys are both amazing soccer coaches. Um, so it's like you can learn so much, but the basics, just using both feet. Um, I'm very left-footed, <laughs> like very left-footed. I wish I was better at my right. Um, 
I wish I would, someone would have told me that I needed to be stronger and more aggressive. Um, but the communication I notice for your age level is I like to hear, and especially when you're going through the college process, they're always looking for players who want the ball, who are on the ball. So opening your mouth, more communication, you know, that's huge in soccer. So I can't stress that enough when, with what coaches are looking for is the aggressive nature in a player, you know, technical will come if you keep working on it, working on the basics with the coaches, but you know, all the other things that are outside of, you know, on the soccer field, working on that, um, you know, the weight room, I wish I would have got stronger, as I said, and those, the mental game. Now you guys have so many more things at your fingertips that you can learn from players. Um, as you see, there's a lot of pro players that have opened their social media up to talk to players like you. So if you ever have a question, you can always reach out to us and ask us. Um, but I think that those are the things is, is the more stuff off the field rather than on the field, because I think that we don't stress that enough as these kids are getting older. Yeah, Coach, Coach Daniel? You're muted. I know, right? Um, this brought, if for all the people who know me here, they'd be like, wow, Coach Daniel's quiet for a change. Um, in any case, um, so for me, I relate to you on the slip in the World Cup. We'll obviously not on that grand stage. Um, I got to play a little pro and I played college at a high level, but one of the biggest moments of slipping was I caused a PK in the semifinals back in Trinidad and Tobago against St. Anthony's Darius, you'll know those guys. And it was in front of 15,000 fans and I'm like 17 years old and I came late. The guy dived. No one believes me, but he dived. <laughs> Got the PK and we lost, right? They got the PK, we lost two to one in the last two minutes of the game. The news shamed me, um, newspapers shamed me, all my friends shamed me. But, and that's at a young age. Yeah. What was the biggest thing for me, I would say, is that I had that bad mind mentality. I gotta prove people wrong. Yeah. And I can't lose. I, I don't want to end my legacy or be sorted as just the person who messed up. So I'm glad you were able to overcome in the biggest stage ever for a soccer player to overcome that where everyone's looking at you. So kudos for you. Thank Plus you. this shouldn't wet the turfy. Let's be real, right? <laughs> Everybody was <laughs> so, slipping and sliding. That's why all the goals were right? on the ground, if anybody so, knows that. I love that story. And I love that you had that, well, sorry that you had that moment, but you're able to bounce back and continue your career, which is good. But anyway, my, my question is a lot of kids, a lot of American kids in every sport quantify everything. So from your point of view, for me, I grew up outside of the US is a feeling, is a vibe. Yeah. But a lot of Americans, because you know, it's stats, 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 stats. Yeah. How would you either quantify or find a blend? of getting it right. Like we spoke to Josie last, what, last month, Altidore, and he said he did 200 shots after practice every day. Uh, I'm not quoting him. Um, yeah. Beckham did 150 free kicks after every practice, minimum. Kobe Bryant did 500 free throws every morning at 5 a.m. Are you one of those people that quantifies till, you, or do you go until, you get it right. Because I have a lot of players that I train them with. They're like, coach, one more. Coach, one more. One I love more. that. Right? I, which, which one you rather be or you want to give the advice to, to players? Think, okay, 200 shots or till they get it right. Look, like every practice you're going to keep getting better. You might not get it right that practice. But mm. I love the mentality of players that are like, hey, 10 more shots, I want to end on a good one. You know, I always leave practice on a good one. Um, now that I became a defender, I would always bring my defense together at the end of practice, and I would go over what happened in practice and what needs to be fixed. So, Ella, I see that you're a center defender. Um, you can be the leader out there, and you can pull your defenders together, and you guys, you be the leader out there and be like, hey, we got to step here quicker. We got to do this. And you guys can work on shifting, you know, 
shifting in the back line. You can do little things like that. Um, I think that's what makes from good to great. You know, I think when you see the Kobe's, the Josie's, all them, I think that's why they've got to where they've gotten to. And um, I've always been that, that player as well, especially when I was a forward, I would take a couple more shots, but you also have to <laughs> be cognizant of your body too and not to over overdo it. But I think always ending on a good one. Um, I think that we, sh we focus, we do focus too much on stats and I feel like that's what we should not be doing. Um, I think that you could be the best player in the field and not score the goal. So I think there's different, so many different elements to each other's game. So if, even if you're not the person who scores a million goals or points, that's okay. You're adding something different to the equation. So I think every player just knowing their role on the field is what's vital to you being the best that you can be as a team. Um, so if your role is to score goals and that's what they see you as, as if your role is to be a beast in the air, you work on that. You know, if your role is to be the leader and, you know, assist or go run up and down, everyone's different. Everyone's a different player. And that's what, you know, leads to you guys being the best together as, as a unit. So, um, yeah, I mean, I echo J Josie and all of them just because that's just our mentality. We want more and more and more because we want to be the best. Everyone wants to be the best. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I think if there's a healthy balance of it, not obsessing over it, because then if you obsess over it too much, then that's when you fail. But I think having that healthy balance of like, yeah, I'll take an extra 10 shots. So I'm, I know when I go into a game, I'm going to score that, that screeching upper 90. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I think. Appreciate. And then I have, there's a couple of questions that I've played. Yes. I played against Alex and Julie and Crystal. Um, I'm trying okay, to answer. Okay, wait, let me let me jump in. Since seeing that you played against Alex and, and um all these great players, what what was your strategy or did your team have a like a give us the in-game strategy for playing against Alex Morgan in a in a game? Which one do you remember and I how did that game go? I think it's important for you guys as players to really like watch and learn and grow from other players and you know, watch game film and stuff like that, especially, I mean, I know you guys are still young right now, but you guys can be watching like the NWSL um, and watch how these players play and their mentalities and, and stuff like that. So for me, depending on who I knew I was going to be marking that game and the surrounding players and also their team strategy, how they play against us last time, we would always watch game film and kind of break it down to to learn but i knew every player in the, the league was small i knew every player in the league and what their tendencies were so when i went up against alex i knew that she wasn't good at this but she was good at this and i had to be aware of this and 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 etc cetera, etc cetera. so um i think it's just always having your when you're playing we always are talking about head on a swivel head on a swivel like really always seeing what's around you um and learning what even in the beginning of a game, maybe this player is doing this dashing run. And so we have to be as a back line, Ella, as a back line, we're like, okay, she makes that darting run across. I got to stick my arm out. So should we slow her down? You know, I'm not, not going to let her get in front of me. It's okay. You can use that arm. It's all right. You know, it's just like learning how to play smart defense, but you know, aggressive defense. Um, but yeah, I think you just you just learn and you watch these players over time. Like I grew up watching like a Christine Sinclair, even though we're the same age. I grew up watching her. So when I got on the field and I had to guard her, I she or guard her, mark her. It was like I knew what she was going to do. And she's like, how did you? And I was like, I've been watching you since you were, you know. So and I hope to see all of you guys there one day that wants. How many of you guys really have you guys want to play? I can't really see you because you guys are all on no cameras, but um as I said, you know, I'm going to be coming to the camp on the 10th. And then also my DMs are always open. So if you guys don't feel comfortable asking something on here, you guys can always message me. So, and um, I can tell you more about anything. So. Um, Darius, I'm just bummed. Uh, unless you want to read the question from CJ Darius. Oh, good. Go ahead. Right. So CJ is one of my players and I know her friends are with her. Um, from my team. Why aren't they on the video? CJ, turn on your Man, video. CJ, sad. come on. CJ is CJ. a handful. My God. <laughs> but, 
she makes practices fun. Everyone wants to come yeah. practice. CJ, we want to see you, CJ. Come on. That's so, a good CJ, ask your question. Okay, my question was, what did you do to get looked at the most by coaches, like college coaches, and like what helped you and what didn't help? Like, yeah. So that's honestly that is a, a very very good question, and I think it also depends on too where you grew up. So obviously, you guys are in a hotbed of amazing soccer. So I think that there's always coaches looking everywhere here in Wisconsin. It was a little different. Um, so I went to a team, we only had one really good team in, in the whole state. Um, and all of us went D one and we would go to some of the showcases and stuff like that, but there's so many players and there's so many coaches. I think what's important is for you to write down a list of the teams that, or the colleges that you want to go to. And for both, school wise and soccer wise and where you fit realistically fit in their system um and where you know that you're gonna play you know and stuff like that and then what i did is i actually reached out to the colleges and i said hey i'm playing in this tournament come watch me play you know i i was oh i'm a big advocate of letting people know you're there that's what i did with canada i said hey you know, I was in their ear. I was like, I wrote them emails. I said, hey, watch me in this game. Watch me. I'm playing for this team. Like, if you ever need new players coming in, I'm ready, you know? And that's what I did with college is I wrote to all the top schools that I wanted to go to and I was interested in. I said, I'm going to be at all these showcases. Make sure you just take a look at me, please. These are my strong suits. I never write my weaknesses. I say, that, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, this is the type of player I am. Um, I hope you guys come out. Like, I'm really excited to meet you, et cetera. So, um, yeah. And there's also a lot of recruiting services. I, I don't know much about them, but I'm a huge advocate of putting yourself out there and letting people know who you are. And, and also, as you guys know, social media, a lot of coaches go on there. If you'd be surprised. Um, so putting up some, some, um, little, uh, highlight reels of yourself is, is a good thing too. Like I talked to one of my agents the other day, cause I'm actually becoming an, a soccer agent as well. And he's like, social media has taken over and they're actually recruiting players off of social media. So making sure your social media is, is nice and clean. Don't do anything bad on it. And also, um, you know, highlight yourself, show, show me some of those tricks, you know, tag, tag Lauren Sesselman. On yeah, tag me. I want to see and see if I can do some of them. I'm not a very, I can't do a lot of tricks, but I can do some. <laughs> Lauren, if you had, um, if you had a platform like you train, um, that, allows you to talk to professional players like kids like Ella, CJ. Uh, how do you think that that would have changed things for you growing up? Oh, I mean, I think it would be huge because I never, I didn't have a mentor. Like in Wisconsin, nobody went on to do, there was three people. It was like Jada Merritt, Leslie Osborne, and, and, and me that went to go do this. And I had, my parents had no idea what to do with me. We figured it out, but there was a lot of bumps along the way. And I think to be able to have someone that's been through the process, being able to tell them what their story was and how they did it um, and answer your questions, I think is, is pretty special. And I wish I would have been able to talk to, to players and kind of get the inside look because we don't really know what it's like until we talk to somebody that's actually done it. And um, it would have been really cool. So that's why, and I think that's why the power of social media is a good thing too, so that you guys, if you are too scared to ask something here and you don't want your coaches to know, you can definitely just, just message me and just be like, Hey, I was on this, you know, this is my question. I'm very open to everything. So I think that's, it's pretty cool that you can connect more with people. Nice. Any more questions? Cause Danielle, who has questions on here? Um, okay. I can Ella's jump in or not. Sorry. I'm just reading these, these, Ella's dog is cute. <laughs> hope they hope they showering the dog. Anyway, um, so from uh, so obviously California is very competitive, as you know. I would say it's probably number one or number top two at least in the nation for at least women's soccer. And parents are always wanting to know where should their kid be? I mean, I've had my opinions through the age groups of like between eight and 12, 12 and 15, 15 and 18. For you and your mentality, what's the best, what's the top two things you should get out of these three questions? Should a player be 
Um, should she be around the best players as possible? Should she be in the best league where she plays like against the best competition every weekend? Or should she be with a really good coach that can teach her? What two out of the three and what age groups, which or the other should be a priority, if that makes sense? I think in the beginning, I mean, obviously good coach, hopefully throughout the whole, and I, you know, and sometimes a lot of players will be like with a coach and they still feel like they're learning as much as they can learn from them and that's okay. And they go to a different team with, with me. Um, what I did is when I was playing, I didn't feel like I was growing as a player in the current club teams that I was playing in green Bay. Like I was just not going to get better in that environment. Um, so my coach even was like, which was great of him. He was like, you need to go to a different team. So then I went and played for the best team in the state. Thank goodness for my parents driving me almost three hours to and from practice every day. Um, that's no, that's nothing out here in LA though. And, um, everyone on my team went D one. It was the best team in the state. Um, had all the best players. Leslie Osborne was on it as well. So I got to learn from her and it was the best coaching I ever had. And, for me, with the goals that I wanted to achieve, I had to put myself in that position. And I don't think if I would have put myself in that position, I would be where I'm at today. So I think at a certain level, at a certain point, um, especially when they get to high school, I think it's really important to make sure if you do want to play in college, that you're putting yourself in the best in environment for yourself. So, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear that, but at the same time, it's so cutthroat and, for female athletes, there's such a small amount of spaces available that it's like you need to put yourself in the best position where you're going to be seen and be surrounded by players who have the same mindset as you because there was a team I was on and I was working so hard and the other players weren't really working so hard and they would make fun of me for working so hard. And I was like, I can't listen to that because I have goals. And so I told my parents, I was like, look, I have to be surrounded by players that are in the same mindset as me because I know what I want to do. And that's exactly what I did. And it was the best thing for me. Um, so, so best players for sure. That's one. Yeah. So what, the next question, out of the two, do you want to be around the best coach or do you want to be in the best league where you're playing the you know, somewhat the best competition every week. Which one do you value more? That's a hard question. Can I have right? All? You can't have you can't have all three. I mean, very if I few. Was surrounded by really good players, and we weren't in that good of a league. I would like the coaching to be good, but it depends at what age level. If I was in my last year, my senior year, I would want to be in the best league. Because right. uh, I mean, you're going to be go throwing into if you were going to play in college, you're going to be into a a whole nother world. So you want to make sure you're training at that same level, otherwise you're going to get destroyed and then you won't, you know, it's just like, and they can take away scholarships too. So it's like, you want to make sure you're putting yourself and surrounding about yourself with people that are going to push you to be the best that you can be. I also just think it's just the mentality of like what the player wants to get out of it. So if the player wants, has goals to become a college athlete, for sure, all of those. If they just want to have fun, then just go have fun. So just be in that kind of um, a league. So it's a hard question to answer because I think it just depends on what the, what the kid wants to do. Yeah. Not what the parent wants to do, what the kid wants to do. Fair enough. <laughs> Coach Corey, you about to ask something? Eileen, Eileen, a parent to everyone. Eileen, do you do you mind joining on and asking us a question, Eileen? What do you do if every coach plays your child in one position? All right. Well, what do you do if you if if a coach plays your child in one position? Every coach plays your child in one position. So, like, they see that. Oh, she's player, in the car. Okay. If they see that player is just that position. I think that a coach should should show players how to play multiple positions. Sorry, I don't know if that was directed at any coaches, but I believe in having players play multiple positions and not just one position because 
every coach is going to see a player differently. I mean, I've been put in so many different positions. I was center forward, then I was wing, then I became an outside back into a center back. So I think it's vital to show players different positions because the game has changed and evolved so much from since when I was your age. And if you see like a Crystal Dunn and a versatile player like that, you have I've seen my coach, like when I was with Houston, pull so many forwards to try to play outside backs because outside backs is the most sought after position right now. Um, I, and they couldn't do it. The players couldn't do it. There was a lot of forwards that could not do it. Um, they just couldn't understand that role. So I think it's important to show each player different positions, especially since they're young right now. And I think it's important for them to learn the roles of other positions. Um, I always learned all the positions on the field. I knew what everybody, what everyone's role was. And then that's what made us a whole as one unit. So, I mean, if that coach only sees her really playing that position, I guess that's fine. But I'm a big advocate of trying people in different spots because I, okay, let me just give you one example real quick. So we had this, this camp where a bunch of pro coaches came. Okay. So I do it every year with a Gucci on Yewu. We have a bunch of pro, we bring a fly a bunch of agents, a bunch of coaches in to get looked at for these players that are out of college. And th there was a coach from Iceland there and he pulled me aside and he goes, I want to see this player in this position. And I told the player, Hey, he really likes you. Um, he wants to see you in this position. She's like, I don't want to play there. And I said, well, he sees you and he thinks that you're going to be able to play in that position. Can you show him? I, I have faith in you. You can do it. So when she went out there, she started in the position that I said, and then she switched midway through. The coach pulled me aside. He goes, I don't want her anymore. He, she didn't listen to me. So I think what that shows you is like each coach, as you move up, is going to see something different and you just adapt and you learn and you grow. So even if you're scared to play the position, you learn how to play it and you give it your, all, your, all you got. And if it doesn't work out, then he'll put you back in that position. So that's, I just wanted to share a story with you because I think it's very important. I had a lot of, players say that I don't want to play that position. I was like, well, then you might not ever play. So you'll ask any, any athlete, any soccer player, they've probably changed positions on more than one occasion. Yeah. If we, if we don't have any more questions, I think we should maybe just kind of wrap it up now. Um, anyone has any more questions? This is a great question, Eileen. Eileen, you can always message me too on Instagram or email. Darius has all my information. Yeah. So, I'm going to post, I'm going to post Lauren's Instagram right here. You guys could DM Lauren. Um, oh, yeah. You can give her my email too, just in case if Eileen doesn't have Instagram. Okay. Okay. Great. I will leave her your Instagram or your email right on here now. And any last questions, coach, coach Daniel? Yeah. Well, I just want to leave a, a plug in to, um, so for Lauren, Coach Lauren will be at uh, Girl Power Camp. It'll be our second all-girls camp, August 10th in San Marcos. Last year, we had a huge success. We had the girls from Manchester United, Liverpool, Man City. And, it, and of course, we had Coach Corey there. And it's, it's growing and the movement is happening. And it's such a pleasure to have uh, Coach Lauren coming in this year, having World Cup experience and having your big personality, and it's just gonna be fun. And we have some girls going to Spain, and we have Devlin who played for the US. So the, the aspect of being professional, what is in college, what is um, playing in the World Cup, it's gonna be awesome. And having you guys there at uh, Girl Power Soccer Camp, um, August 10th will be amazing. So. Um, that's my plug-in for the day at soccer360.co. And I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to meeting you in person. Yay. All right. Thank you, guys. It was so nice to meet all of you guys. I can't wait to have fun. I'm going to put the Girl okay. Power, uh, our Instagram on there, Girl Power Soccer on Instagram. Just follow it. And anything that we're doing, we'll post it on there. Um, the camp's going to be great. Can't wait to see you guys. Coach Corey, the gang, we're back another year. Thank you so much, Lauren. No problem, guys. Thank you.